welcome to the Acropolis Rally Greece, of course, the rally of uh, the gods, one of the founding uh, rallies. And it has certainly made an impact through the years, last year since 2013. But back with those fearsome roads, Sebastian Auger waiting to head out on to Shakedown. Now stage one starts tonight and Athena, the goddess of war, sets uh, the scene for Shakedown, the prelude to the battle. OK, well, there are 15 stages to play out over the weekend. And of course, we will bring you every single bit of action as we await the first part of the Acropolis Rally, which is the shakedown, of course, our world champion Sebastian Auger will head out on to that shakedown stage. So let's hand over to the action. Thank you very much for that, Kiri. I'm Bex Williams, Julian Porter alongside me for the shakedown test this morning. Welcome everyone to Greece. The Rally of the Gods is back on the championship calendar, but the gods haven't been too kind in terms of the weather. It's been wet, it's muddy out there, not quite what you'd expect from Rally Acropolis. That's going to really mix things up this weekend. Julian, that's what we've been talking about. That's been the talking point so far this weekend. The weather conditions you can already see from Seb, how muddy it is out there from the onboard. Yeah, I think he's uh, very, very happy to have uh, some wet conditions. He was saying that it might help him on a lot of stages this weekend. The first pass is only, there's very few stages repeated. So. But it's, it's a real big challenge. This rally is demanding enough as it is. Now to fire a load of mud and rain into it. I, I, I'm genuinely excited because I think it's going to be very, very difficult. It is going to be a hugely difficult rally. It has been in the past, of course. It's back on the championship calendar after an eight-year wait. Look at the side of the car already. It's kind of Wales Rally GB spec in terms of the mud as we head on to this tarmac section of stage. Yeah, I find like we've been seeing all the social media posts, haven't we, of, of the drivers, and they've been saying, Wales or Greece, take your pick. <laughs> and it has been very, very tricky. But yeah, you saw how slippy that tarmac section is, and there's now a concrete section in the stage. You know, this rally, historically, is actually bizarrely running out of gravel roads, because the government... Are, uh, uh, packing up more and more roads with tarmac and concrete. You just see there how slippy it is. It, it, for me, I, I I like difference. I like challenges. I like changes. And well, everyone having, does. Having having a bit of mud around in Greece really will give us a big talking point. I spoke to Gus Greensmith first thing this morning. He said, "What's going on with the weather? I've been training in a in a heat chamber for weeks in preparation for this, and now it's just kind of you know UK temperatures out there. It is going to throw a curveball in this weekend, and of course that's what we want to see. It's the battle for the championship title now as we come towards the close of the championship. We're on round nine here in Greece. Elvin Evans in second position in the championship, 38 points behind teammate Auger, and of course Newville is second along." Alongside him as well, they're on joint points overall. Elvin needs something special here, Jules. Yeah, and to be fair, without discrediting Elvin, he's actually said this two or three times, hasn't he? Now, where I, I just need to up it. You can see the racing line first on the road is the place to be in these conditions. It's like I just love the way you see the marks. You see how you can actually lovely see the lines that OG has taken there. But yeah, Elvin needs a, a big result. I, I, I think it's very, very hard to try and capture to, to try and capture Ogier now. But interesting talking to Yari Mati Lavala last night, and he said this is not actually what they wanted. An unpredictable rally. They just wanted a nice, typical Greece, even though they were going to struggle first and second on the road. Because now it's anybody's game. Whereas they had an idea of what could be the game plan beforehand. So the run into the championship is going to be exciting. Oje then completes the first run of Shakedown. Molly Pettit is at the stage end for us, making sure she doesn't rub against that car and get herself completely filthy. It is very muddy out there. Let's see what Seb's got to say then about the conditions first thing this morning. So good morning. I don't think any of us were expecting the conditions we're having right now. How would you describe the stage and also the recce? <laughs> yeah, well, like you see, it looks more like Wales here, but uh, you know, we don't have Rally GB in the calendar since long, so maybe it's also good. 
But yeah, of course, it's not like expected. Uh, yeah, this run, it was try to judge a bit the grip uh, because, uh, uh, yeah, uh, obviously we haven't tested uh, and prepared for, for that condition. <laughs> Exactly. That, that's exactly right. You know, all the tests were in baking heat, yeah. Jules. You know, you find the roughest road, you find the hottest conditions, you test. And now you come to the rally, it's completely changed. So everything has turned on its head this weekend. And quite frankly, I'm loving that element. I'm sure the teams are right now. But as fans, as spectators ourselves, we're loving the fact that it's all going to be a little bit different out there. That's it. When you get the really thick mud, though, what happens? It, you know when you go for a walk in the forest, or something and you get that really claggy thick mud that sticks to your boots and you gain a couple of inches in height when you get back that's what we've got in some sections and, but the problem with that is is it blocks up the, t the, the blocks on the tires it really kind of like fills a tire full of mud and it's very easy to lock up tarmac sections in a stage is also very very treacherous you know it's particularly when they're damp the, the car can lock up very easily under braking there Elvin then through with a 3.21.1. That's the fastest time through so far, 3.23.4 for Ogier. And we'll get his thoughts with Molly. Scott just leaving a little bit of air into the car there. Big weekend in prospect for you. Make sure you join us on All Live for the entirety of the Acropolis Rally. Alvin, good morning. Just looking at your car, I've got to ask the obvious question. Are you feeling a little bit at home in these conditions? <laughs> Not really. I mean, it's uh, quite a different mud to what we get at home in Wales. So, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, not, not so easy out this one. Feeling confident about the weekend, though? There's some points to make up? Yeah, for sure. We have to have a good weekend. Obviously, we have to try our best. Um, so let's see what happens. Gus Queensmith described it as chunky mud this morning, and I think that's exactly what you were referencing. Julian, it's claggy, it, you know, it fills the tyre walls completely. It is a bit different to what we, uh, we get back at home in Wales, but I have loved the comparisons across social media from the drivers from the recce this weekend. Jon Haltonen was a big one to be posting. What can Rob and Pera do out there during the weekend? Uh, I thought, even though he won in Estonia, I thought the drive of the season from him was it was Belgium. The, the way that he just grabbed that by the scruff of the neck and then took it to the high and dies. Uh, I thought he was outstanding there, on the back of an Estonia, you know. So what he can do this weekend, I, I don't know. It, strangely, he he hasn't got a huge amount of experience in these types of conditions in this car. Mm. You know, last year, what did we do when we were when we came back? Estonia, it was dry to dry-ish. I mean, the wettest rally we had was Monza. That's what I mean, on tarmac. So he's very limited in his experience on these types of, uh, of roads as uh, Neuville goes quickest. Yeah, it's a 320.3 then, fastest time on the board. We'd love to know what your thoughts are on who could be on the top three positions during the weekend here at Rally Acropolis. Use the hashtag WRC Live across social. We'll be able to see what you're chatting about. What are your one, two, threes? For what is a rally which is going to be completely different to what you expected. Morning Thierry, how does it feel to be back here at the Acropolis Rally, even though we have these conditions? I mean, we're all happy to be here, that's for sure, but uh, we didn't expect those conditions to come here. Um, it was awful uh, recce, but uh, yeah, I mean, we have to see forward now. Uh, the weather could improve a little, and maybe we get a bit more normal conditions for the race. Yeah, the weather is set to improve. It looks as if it's going to be sunny and dry on Friday and Saturday. The threat of some more rain on Sunday, though. And it, the stages will dry out quite quickly. But what you've got, then, is, is a completely different complexion of a stage from what they reckoned on. It's got wet, it's got muddy, and then it's dry. There's going to be ruts out there. It's going to be really challenging. Yeah, and then underneath the trees as well, it, it will really dry out a lot. So you're going to have this potentially very dry road out in, the, in the open areas like this. And then when you go into the woods and places, then it's going to be like a bit muddy, like underneath there. And, and 
like what I was saying yesterday, this is one of the tricky points. This is one of the tricky parts. And the driver finding their confidence if where the grip is at fast is the hardest thing. He doesn't seem to be going very fast there. But, but he's mightily. Really? Quick. Three, wow. 14.3 is the fastest time. And it, as you can see from the board, it's six seconds up on Newville. It's, it uh, just didn't seem to be at full speed when we came on, on board with him. Obviously, I was too. Wow. <laughs> so I thought... The first surprise of the weekend. Look at that. We'll hear from, uh, from Calais in a moment or two. And then we'll talk about tyres for the weekend. That's quite staggering. Six seconds. Kala, good morning. Your first Acropolis rally. I'm sure this isn't what you were expecting, was it? No, not really. Uh, the condition is really muddy and tricky, so... So, yeah, it's quite different what you was expecting. What are you hoping to achieve this weekend? A podium, maybe? Yeah, of course, podium is always a good target, so let's see what we can do. Who knows, it could even be more than that this weekend. Now that well, we're that kind of stage time on yeah. Shakedown, yes. Oh, yes. This is the first round of Shakedown, but yes. Oi, Tanak, now then, and Martin Yave, we tyres this weekend, Julian. I mean, I spoke to a couple of drivers this morning who said that they'd be taking the hard compound out there first thing this morning and maybe that's the difference maybe Robin Pera hasn't taken hard so they've got limited soft compound tyres which are now the ideal choice in this condition they only have eight soft compound tyres from Pirelli for this weekend because the dominant choice the dedicated choice is the hard compound yeah and they might just be kind of rather than wasting not wasting but using up a set of soft during your shakedown runs keep them so as you say maybe Robin Pera has decided to come out on the soft tyre but I was just quite staggered by that, but that could be what it is. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Cloudy, moody skies. We are expecting more rain throughout the day today. Let's have a look at this time then from Tanak. But just that section there, where we saw Rob and Pera there, there just didn't seem to be a lot of energy going through the car compared to what we saw with Tanak. And when I saw the time, I was thinking, minus six, is that not a plus? And I was getting confused with it. But as you say, it could be he's taken the soft tyre, uh, which obviously we don't have that information. When you said that, I was just quickly checking up on our, uh, on our social media networks. Well, good morning. Some interesting conditions so far on this rally. How would you describe the shakedown stage? I guess you've heard already four times, but uh, pretty muddy. Yeah. What is the plan for the weekend? Yeah, hopefully the plan for the weekend is a, a bit drier. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see. Hopefully it will be a normal crease. Well, yeah, I mean, the temperatures look normal, but the stages have already had so much rain. It's not going to be quite the normal Acropolis. I think it's, it's going to be a real mix out there this weekend, which is going to be a fascinating watch across the next three days. We join Gus Greensmith now then and Chris Patterson. I make a I made a mistake earlier. He said I said he said chunky mud. Clunky mud is clunky. clunky. I've never heard mud, mud described as clunky before, but that's how he described it. We did an interview with Gus last night and uh, a very fascinating insight. To, uh, more of Gus Greensmith, the personality, the person. Uh, and, and, and what he sees and how he feels he's, he's got to move up in the world of running. So that's going to be played out over our pre-recorded programmes and our highlights programmes over the weekend. But real fascinating insight from Gus himself. About Gus dreams with the person as much as anything else. I oh, thought there might have been some chit chat then, but no. So 11.4 seconds down then on the fastest time of Royal Vampira. 3.14.3 is the fastest time to shake down this morning from Calais. We'll hear from Gus in a few moments. So five drivers safely through so far. Let's get his thoughts. Morning, 
anything else. Your car looks like it's just done a stage at Wales Rally GB, not Acropolis Rally. Can you share some of your insights from the recce and also the shakedown stage? I didn't see much of the recce. <laughs> There's a bit too much fog for that, but uh, yeah, shakedown was quite an enjoyable stage. I think uh, a bit more grip than I expected there to be, uh, even on the hard tyres. So yeah, all okay. Will that stage win come this weekend? Uh, well, let's see. He is chasing down his first WRC stage win, as Molly's referencing there, and who knows? It could come this weekend. This man picked it up a few rallies ago, of course. Adrian Formo and Renault Jamal back in WRC machinery with M Sports. And with the departure of Timur Sunnan and leaving the team, Adrian will continue for the rest of the season in this car. So. Yeah, that was the news last week, wasn't it, across the uh, the social channels from Sunanen, who has uh, stepped away then. And thank for M Sport very much for the for the years he's been with them, but uh, they have parted ways. It was uh, we interviewed Rich Milner about it yesterday, and basically from what he said in the interview, was Tim Sunanen's the rest of his season was in WRC2, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Timber was wanting a bit more than that, so they. Amicably decided to part ways so that uh, Timu would uh, or potentially could find another opportunity somewhere else. But as Rich said, Malcolm Wilson never shuts the door on anybody. Big slide. I'm sure Formo will be relishing this challenge this weekend along with the other drivers, so much delight that the Acropolis Rally is back on the uh, the championship calendar. <laughs> so odd to see spectators with jumpers on and yeah. wet weather gear. <laughs> but just watching it go up that hill there. You know, in the, in the dry, there'd be just that massive conviction of foot flat, flat on the throttle. There, you could, they were trying to feed the power in, so they weren't getting so much wheel spin. This is a, you know, a good representative stage of the rally, quite similar to the stages we're going to see on Friday. New co-driver for uh, Danny Sordo this weekend. Unfortunately, we can't hear it. <laughs> Candido Carrera alongside Danny. Plenty of people out there this morning, which is good to see, and there will be plenty on the stages during the weekend. to see the condition of the stage you know first thing tomorrow morning after all the rain we've had and okay the temperatures we know are going to be nice tomorrow going to be pretty high 28 29 degrees saw those eyes are like out on stalks which position on the road first thing tomorrow is going to be best uh, I, I think in these conditions first if it's still like yeah. this tomorrow morning if it's still like if, this. It, and that's the big question it's the big if Will it have dried out by then? Will there be more rain on the uh, stages that we have on Friday or not? Lots of question marks. Make sure you join us on All Live to get your full visual on tomorrow morning's stages. We kick off, of course, this evening with the opening test. In the centre of Athens, let's hear from Adrienne. Adrienne, good morning. It's good to see you back in this car. What would you say about the conditions of this year's Acropolis rally? It's just what we did. We really expected uh, for coming in Greece, but uh, yeah, it's really muddy and it's really slippy, so I wasn't taking any risk uh, on this run, so so yeah, we, we have to find a way because the condition will be always changing in different stages, so we'll have to find a setup, but it will be challenging for sure. And close it, please. Uh, say, yeah, on that hairpin down here, hell hairpin, Danny said to Candino, there was an adjustment of the notes because of that, that big slide. We referenced it earlier on, didn't we? We have that muddy, wet, well, muddy tyres, wet tarmac downhill. And a few people have had one of those very slow motion slides through that hairpin left.
Osorno obviously drafted in and out. Thought this car, Craig Breen, was in it for the Ypres, where they finished second overall. And I suspect the reason for bringing Sordo here was uh, he would have a good road position because it's always dry and dusty and uh, in Greece. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, you know, the gods are laughing at everyone right now, are they? Oh, you're going to change things around a little. Let's just throw some rain your way. See how you deal with that. But Sordo has good experience here. Uh, he's been on the podium here yeah. previously as well. Oh, he's been here so many times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But has he been here in these conditions? Danny, good morning. It's good to see you back in the WLC. You have a lot of experience of this rally. How would you describe this one? Yeah, obviously it was uh, some places really bad. Uh, just, uh, we check all and all, and uh, we have a small issue when they leave the service, but uh, uh, it's all good. Uh, just checking the car, everything was going well, and uh, yeah, I think the conditions are not like in uh, here in Greece, like normally it is, but uh, it's like it is. Okay, well, we'll get to the bottom of, uh, we had a small, a small issue. issue. <laughs> name to get you your teeth around first yeah. thing in the morning Jules yeah I, I think Blue Bay you know I, I see a, 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 an interesting result potentially for Blue Bay on the cart here if, if you can stay on the road because you know he keeps telling us that he needs to learn he needs to learn he needs to learn you can learn a lot this weekend and you can gain a lot of points by staying on the road yeah uh, and not making a mistake. Letting the action happen in yes. front of you. Yeah. Interestingly, Lube not on the start list, or interest, sorry, for Finland, I noticed. Uh, I did check and double check, and I was thought I was... I don't see him anywhere on that, on that entry list for Finland, so... OK, we'll find out about that this weekend. And through the red boards, then. For Lube. A 3.27.4. Dilrov and Pera with the fastest time through on run one of Shakedown. The yeah, form was very slow. We, we commented on that out of that hairpin, up the uphill hairpin, where he just didn't seem to have any conviction of, of, of throttle. But yeah, 19.1. He didn't report any issues, but very slow or very cautious sensibly. Good morning, Pierre-Louis. This rally is a big enough challenge in itself. How are you feeling on these conditions? Yeah, it's not what we expect, so... But uh, let's see for sure if it's like this, that will be tricky, but... Uh, it was not uh, so much worse. I was thinking it was worse. That's good. He was expecting it to be worse. Brilliant. <laughs> Jordan Sodorides and Frederick Miglott. We haven't seen Jordan for a while, so it's fantastic to see him back here. This tricky downhill section then. Australia, was it On the 19? Tarmac. Australia 19 when he went. Oh. oh! You talked about that, Jules, how difficult that downhill is yeah. in these conditions. And unfortunately, a little mistake there. What, what, what he did, when I say what he did wrong, what he got caught out on was he didn't hook the inside. Everyone else has hooked the inside and thrown all the gravel from the inside onto the tarmac. He stayed on what he believed would be the cleaner part of the road and then understeered on everyone else's dirt. If you are just joining us this morning, welcome along to the first run of the shakedown test here at Rally Acropolis. Stage one that begins for us this evening in the centre of Athens. We're really taking rally to the people tonight. Before the tough, challenging gravel stages await the drivers beginning on Friday morning. Will we continue to see conditions like this tomorrow? That is the big question. We're all asking right now, but the drivers are, are really asking it. It was Australia 18 when we last saw him, so I, I knew it was Australia. I remember him coming along. Yeah, it's not too, no. too, uh, too long. Interestingly, obviously, uh, 
a Greek national flag and everything. He's never done this, Kropos rally, as a world championship event. Only ever as a European championship event. And you think normally your home rally you would do is when, uh, when yeah. you, you could, so. Well done, good morning. Tell us how happy you are to have this rally back. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, for the shakedown, uh, it's a real shakedown. Eh? It's very difficult, extremely slippery. Uh, we missed already uh, an airpin. Yeah, uh, we are deep in. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a wake-up call this morning, I think, but uh, it's what we expected to see when we saw those kind of conditions out there. It's really easy to make a mistake this morning. Elliot Edmondson, a new co-driver to Andreas Mickelson as well. So, English pace notes. Yeah, but it's not the first time, is it, for Andreas? He's had Paul Nagel alongside him yeah. before. You know, Mika Markula was calling English, English pace yeah, notes for the, him. Yeah, the, the Nagel and Markula was Volkswagen, so what was that? I mean, this is a, it's a good while ago. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. 15, 16. It is a while ago, but it, it's not a new thing for him. And it's going to be the, the adapting to each other now. And, you know, very different tone from from Elliot. Obviously, a different language. He's been so used to uh, to Olaf Lona. He's he's moved on now to, to different things. It's such a big battle in the WRC2 category. Oh, there we go. He's just congratulating him. Perfect calling. I mean, Elliot's been around a while, hasn't he? You know, and he he spent those times with Gus Greensmith, so. I think it's a partnership which is, you know, it's likely to work well. Let's see how it goes during the weekend. Chris, good morning. A couple of previous starts of this rally in the past, but how would you describe the conditions on this one? Yeah, I think the conditions on the recce was very, very difficult. However, I think it will be a bit easier during the rally, or at least I hope. But this rally, it's not so much about the speed. It's being clever and know when to push and back off. So we'll try to be clever this weekend. Uh, we. We have a championship to drive for, so we uh, we have to have to use our head a little bit. So you expect things to dry up? I hope. <laughs> yeah, he hopes. I think they're all hoping, to be honest, that it is going to dry up out there. And certainly, temperatures are looking beautiful Friday and Saturday. We'll see how it goes. But you know, Andreas is the first to mention it, and he's right. You know, this isn't the rally where you are flat out the entire time. You have to have a strategy. You've got to know where to push, where to back off. Oh. Right, that's it, and, and Mickelson, he needs to make sure he gathers as many points as he possibly can. He, he can't go into... Uh, you, you can drop two scores, but, you know, he, he's already had a couple of duff finishes as, as, and as Andreas, so he's under pressure. He needs to maximise everything, can't afford to go off. Whereas Mats Osberg still has a little bit of credit in the bank, so to speak. He, he's got some... Uh, some scores he can drop further on if he needs to. He has more experience here as well. He's than been Andreas. here a lot of time. Hasn't yeah, he? I think it's five or six times he's competed here. So quicker by 1.1 than Mickelson. Appreciate it. It's only shakedown, but uh, gets a good sight or a good marker in. Morning, Mads. With five previous starts of this rally and probably a hundred starts of Wales Rally GB, it should be a good weekend for you, yeah? Yeah, it's uh, for sure. It's enjoyable conditions, so uh, quite tricky, but uh, I really enjoy the stage. So we just uh, try to, you know, prepare well for the rally, uh, saving our soft tires and just checking everything now. Yeah, you know, Molly's right. <laughs> if you've got good experience of Wales Rally GB. You'd think it's going to help, but as I can't remember who said it, it's, a, it's very different. I think it was Elvin, wasn't it? It's a different kind of mud here, different conditions, because the heat is going to come back. Because it is quite chilly out there. Molly messaged in to say it was just 12 degrees at the end of the shakedown test this morning. Yeah, it's, uh, but I mean, you know, in the past, like the, the stages down in South America, they can get very muddy, very like 
clogged up and things like that. I think that camera, if that's not got its own white clean system, you need to use that very early in the stage. <laughs> yeah, and, and only in the first 100 metres yeah. or so, it seems, before it gets completely unusable. Marco Bellassi then third in the WRC2 Championship. Didn't see him um, in Belgium. Saw him in Estonia. Second overall there. A third overall, sorry. I think Bellassi's what he's doing is the rallies that he's done before, he's he's starting to show like some pace and things like that. He, he understands that you can't just come in at this level and, and, and beat the people who've been around for a long, long time. You've got to kind of build it up. He did WRC3, he's done WRC2, and it's now where you see those weekends where he's been before. The, 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 the promise is there, because we, we know he's quick, but still very inexperienced and, and, and young. But super fast learner, as we've seen on many events. We'll get his thoughts with Molly at the end of this one. Marco, good morning. Your first time doing the Acropolis Rally. I'm sure this isn't what you were expecting. Yeah, for sure it's not what we were expecting. But anyway, the shakedown is a good test to try to understand how the race will be. Thank you. Now, I think that's going to be key this weekend, isn't it? It's understanding what they've got ahead of them because the weather conditions are going to change again. A bit more rain today, we believe, and then beautiful temperatures, which will dry things out and change the complexion of the stages again from what they saw on recce. Or as one of our drivers mentioned it, I think it was Gus who said, you know, they didn't see much on recce because there was a lot of fog out there. Now, we are with Nikolai Gryazin, who we see in a different car this weekend. He's in the, uh, the Ford, he's in the Fiesta. Good result for him, of course, back in Belgium. He was second within WRC2 there, lying sixth in the championship right now. And Nikolai Gryzen is always one to watch in this category. He has huge speed. He's really quite dynamic to watch, I'm sure, as many of you have noticed. I know he does have a lot of fans because he is Mr. Flat Out, it seems, in any kind of condition. He just goes for it. A lot of people love watching that. So let's just run through what we have for you in terms of the WRC two times as he approaches now the end. It's Mads Osberg who set the fastest time with a 3.30.2. 3.45.7 then for Gryazin. As he approaches the stop control, and we'll get a few words with Molly. Good morning, this is your first rally with the Ford Fiesta R5 car. How did it feel on shakedown? Ah, it feels good, but uh, in one hairpin we, we stopped the engine, so yeah, it's, it should need some seven seconds to recover again. So unfortunately, but okay, we'll have a uh, new time to try. Uh, and we need to analyze why it's happening, because yeah, it's a small mistake, but it causes stall. But okay, anyway, it's, it's okay, you need just to use to drive on this car. It's absolutely new for me. Also on the hard compounds, quite difficult to drive, but uh, I feel quite uh, quite, uh, quite calm in, ca in car. So it's not feels too scary, it's just nice to drive. But for sure, uh, need to increase the pace, but uh, I think we'll do it during the race. Yeah, this is the perfect now, time now to adapt to this new car during shakedown. As he mentioned, that store there, it's not quite, the time is not quite so competitive on that first run. 
But there we go. That's what we've got so far then. Cali Rov and Pera with the fastest time on run one of Shakedown with a 3.14.3. Nuval then six seconds behind. Evan 6.8 off that pace. Then it's Tanak, Sordo, Ogier, Greensmith and Lube to the top eight. Then we head into WRC2 with Mads Osberg, the fastest car through so far there, with Mickelson just behind. Then Formo back obviously in uh, WRC territory. Then it's Balassia, Gryzin and Serderides. We're going to head out into the service park now and join Kiri and Julian. Well, thank you so much. That was the first uh, part of Shakedown. And of course, we'll be bringing you a bit more of that action in a second. Now, Julian, hot footing it as always out of the commentary box. So I should say good morning to you. How are you this morning? I I'm good and a little bit more excited. I'm pleased it's not raining right now, but <laughs> I'm pleased we've got that rain just to give us a real good talking point. And it's fascinating. Do you see the stage times difference? We only suspected Rob and Pera is on a soft tyre. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. They seem to be getting ready for him. Here he comes. I'm going, I'm going to try and have a look at what that is on that car, because that's got to be where that... If that, if he's on a hard tyre and everyone else is on a soft, we're in for a, a bumper weekend, because <laughs> if he could take that time out of everyone on the same tyre, wow. But uh, I've got a feeling that he maybe has gone on a soft tyre. I'm not sure. All right, well, I'll let you glimpse that way. Of course, you've got the bird's eye view as well of uh, Toyota just behind us. He's just having a look at the tyres, is Calais. So it'll be interesting to see. Because if he has used a soft, yeah. obviously that's part of his allocation for the event as well. So he just won't want to kind of take away too much tread from those and wear them too much but it is very very wet so potentially it's not too bad but i might have a quick a nick over there okay have a, have a look over there right so 15 stages to play out on the acropolis at rally here shakedown just started we're going to head back over and have a look at oliver solberg running through shakedown julian's just behind having a look at the tires there but a fantastic run through from cali rodham pera i mean what did you make of the weather the stages out there are going to be tricky for sure. Well, the birds are flying low, and I've been told by our crew that once they start flying low, that means the rain's coming in. So about 16 k's or so away is the shakedown stage. So if the rain's coming in here, then who knows? It could be hitting that shakedown stage soon. Julian, just before we go, anything? Uh, no, they have the tyre blanked off, okay. which I, we knew they would, but I was hoping the sticker, with all the rain, the sticker might have come off. But I would say it's got to be a soft. All right, back to Oliver now. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah, Oliver Solberg then into the shakedown test. Aaron Johnson alongside him. He's been looking forward to this for such a long time. Obviously, Dad Petter Solberg has an incredible history with this rally, and we've been watching with awe on, on social media this week as Petter's been posting his kind of favourite memories from the Acropolis rally. The famous one, of course, back in 2002, where Phil Mills is tightening his steering wheel as he's making his way through a stage. Phil Mills calmly calling notes and tightening a steering wheel at the same time. Legendary. And some beautiful shots of Oliver, obviously, as a young kid then coming to these events. Huge challenge for Oliver out there, and it's been a difficult past few events, really, hasn't it, for him? So hopefully this one will go well. as ever, putting a lot of preparation into it all before he gets here. And I'm sure heeding the advice from Petter as well. He stood on the top step of the podium at the Acropolis Rally. Let's see him down this tricky section and the bottom of that uh, tarmac hill. It's a half spin for Solberg. Yeah, it's on that tarmac section. But as we said, you know, the conditions are so difficult out there that little mistakes are going to happen. And this is the place for those mistakes right now. Shakedown is where you want them to happen. believe isn't it looking at some of the conditions out there you know how wet it's been in the past few days we drove up from Athens late last night and as soon as we headed you know quite close to, to Lamia and where we are right now with the shakedown 
the rain was relentless. So it is proper soaked out there, but it should dry out throughout the weekend. But then again, you get to Sunday and there is the potential of some more rain hitting our final group of stages on Sunday. So that could be interesting to, uh, to look out for a long time till we get to that point, though. Just hear Aaron there on the notes in the background for Solberg. Best result we saw from him, of course, was earlier on in the season. He will be hoping for a strong result here. I think to be able to catch up with him during the weekend and to chart his progress, it's been quite an incredible year to see him within this car and also within the World Rally car as well. What opportunity he's had, and he's grabbing it by the scruff of the neck. Look at his thoughts on that first run through shakedown. A tiny mistake from him, then a half spin on the tarmac section. He'll be chatting with Molly in just a few moments. Morning, Oliver. Your first Acropolis rally, and I'm not even sure your dad could help you out with advice for these conditions. How's it going out there? Ah, it's very slippy. Uh, but in the beginning, it was more grip than I expected, so I took it a bit too careful. And then uh, on the on the tarmac bit, I had a half spin. So I will do some go and do some setup changes, and then. Uh, We'll go back, but uh, it's okay. It's it's a good fun. It's it will be a very slow rally if it's so slippy as it is now. Because on this stage you're uh, all the time, you know, pulling in the mud. So uh, we're on the hard tires as well. So it's not not so good grip. But okay, it's it's good fun. So Tavi Svens. There we go. Not so much grip. A little bit slippy out there. Julian, that's true, exactly what Molly was asking. The conditions are just so different. I mean, you've been here over the years as well. This is just a, a whole new world out there. Yeah, I mean, there is sections where there have been, like, big water splashes of mud and you get these flash floods and things like that. I, I can't remember what year it was I was here for the European Rally Championship. 17, I think it was. And it was just unbelievable it was like this the whole weekend <laughs> okay. uh, the, i remember the first stage was like something like 30 kilometers long and we had no idea who was coming to the end of the stage but <laughs> we had three cars come up once then we had a gap of seven or eight minutes and then My it was goodness, three okay. cars later such as not because people were going off just confidence levels and people having half spins or just not having that confidence it's all about confidence in these conditions so what can we expect to see because these conditions are very different to the few drivers that have been here perhaps have seen before but also their recce so what can we expect to see unfold over the next three days uh, there's a lot of uncertainty and it's about confidence Yari Matilapolo was telling us yesterday in these sections where it's nice and dry when it but when it out in the open it'll dry very quickly uh if this, particularly if the sun's coming that they're going to talk about at 28 it's degrees at times tomorrow, isn't it? yeah and then it'll dry out but then in the trees it'll still will be really wet and muddy and it's it's how you adapt to the the changeable conditions fastest uh, and obviously tires now is an issue we've got eight soft tires the rest are hards whether they're going to make a dispensation to come that's in what John i'm Desborough, not who's sure at home whether they just will. said will there be more soft tires so that's the question that we were just talking about i'm, I'm not sure whether they've even got any extra soft is tires already on the truck because they're already <laughs> on the truck but i have heard it before once i think and i can't remember where where they had a dispensation to have some additional tires because of like emergency conditions but if it dries out the, the boys and girls out there... Just, they won't want them, yeah. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's your allocation. Get on with it. So it is going to be interesting, and I, I think it's given us a different element. And the talking point coming into here is how demanding, how rough, how rocky, how challenging this rally was. The weather for me this week in the recce has just... Anything we had prepared or scripted... It's you could just It just got out the window <laughs> with that rain that's coming, and you're thinking, like... Yes, we've got a whole new challenge now. It still will be rough and rocky, but now with these different muddy conditions, it is phenomenal. Tyre strategy as well. Tyre strategy going to come into play. This is one of the founding rallies. It has so much history, and it's all going to play out once again. 
from Thursday to Sunday. Well, shall we see exactly where it all stands at the moment as we head into this rally in terms of championship standings? Because it looks very different. So Sebastian Auger out in front with 162 points. Now, Elvin Evans and Thierry Neuville are tied at the moment on 124 points. Then we see Cali Rodhampera with 99. Oitana Akko with 87 in fifth there. Taka not with us this weekend. Uh, we'll touch on that in just a moment. 66 points. Then Craig Breen with 60 points and Gus Greensmith with those 34 points. OK, shall we take a look as well, just while we're here looking at uh, where everything else at those manufacturers' standings as well? Because, again, they've changed after Belgium, but Toyota's still out in front at uh, 348, but Hyundai a lot closer now on uh, 307 points in there, and Sport uh, Ford there with 135. And then it is the Hyundai Tucci that you see at the bottom there in uh, fourth with those 44 points. Now, Julian, just in case anyone's asking at home, Thierry and Elvin are tied, but Elvin sits at uh, the second position. Why is that? They've both won a rally, I'm sure. I'm trying to think. Have they both won a rally? I'm confused. But it'll be to do with the, the performances of them. How oh, many places they've yeah, got? Yeah, where they okay. get their points from. I'm trying to think. It's a long time ago. Where we it's were. too early for these I questions. Know, it's too early for that kind of question, anyway. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. So what does uh, the Acropolis Rally Greece mean to you? Because, like I said, it's one of the founding rallies. It's got so much history. So maybe what are your memories? I know that we saw Petter posting lots of his memories of being here. What's your big standout memory over the years? <laughs> I can't tell you my big standout, because <laughs> it didn't involve actually being on a stage. It, it involved... A uh, going for dinner at what we didn't realise was a private party. <laughs> and we turned up in all our muddy gear after filming at a water splash. And everyone's looking at us and we're like, table for two for me and my cameraman? <laughs> this is a private party. <laughs> all right, okay. So my I stand out memory of kind of like, oh my word, I can't believe we've done that. But you know, just, just the nature of it, the famous, the historicness of it. And what we've got here this weekend, the organisers, of we're doing the Lutraki stages, we're doing the Lamia stage. We really it's have got a bit of a route around we go to ITEA, you know, we go to all of the really great famous places that this rally's had. So I know these guys and girls have got a lot of road section mileage and things like that, and it's a bit strung out at times on Friday, but to get some of those famous stages is great. Yeah, very cool indeed. OK, well, as we talk about what's unfolding over the weekend, let's have a look at exactly what's in store for you. Well, it's a super special stage down in Athens uh, tonight. So that'll be... Uh, that later on today at five o'clock and then we'll be in the studio as well till eight o'clock okay ten till eight is a big old day on friday stages two to six and then 7 15 till 7 30 stages seven till 12 6 15 till 2 45 is stages 13 to 15 where we will find out at the end of the day at the end of play on sunday exactly who has managed to bring home the victory and what has unfolded here, it is certainly going to be exciting. Who do you think is going to maybe bring home the best performance here? Whose driving style is going to suit these stages? The car that's now not there. <laughs> the man <laughs> that knows exactly what it takes Sebastian to win Sebastian Ogier and Julian Grassi, first on the road is going to be a big advantage. Uh, in these conditions, they're very good at managing it. But Neuville uh, and Hyundai have to really strike while the iron's hot from Belgium. You know, Elvin is used to these conditions from Wales and things like that. So uh, for me, I think we've got a real unpredictable event, which is great. I think it's, it's really exciting. And uh, just, you know, before and I had a bit of brain fade, fortunately, Bex has recovered me and saved me. Uh, uh, Elvin <laughs> she did on win. it this morning because I texted her <laughs> Elvin, on the stat this morning uh, You know, already. I said, when, when did Elvin win? I was trying to go through my brain of when I sat down with him after the rally interview. And I'm thinking, I remember doing it. I remember doing it, but I couldn't remember it. Portugal. No. <laughs> no, Portugal, he won <laughs> he, this year. And that's why I, he sits uh, like a second no, on the old leaderboard okay. rather than Newville because he only won in Belgium. Basically, everything would fall apart without Bex. It's fine. But Bex well, I, I can remember <laughs> sitting down with him, but I just couldn't remember where. I was thinking, where did I do that interview? But anyway. To be fair, those three rallies that all came at the same time, Croatia and then Sardinia uh, yeah. and then Portugal, it's hurt. they all went into one, didn't they? Well, anyway, that's where we stand. That's why Elvin Evans is in second. It's all going to unfold in front of your eyes, so make sure you're with us for all of the action. As we said, we'll be joining you later on uh, for Stage 1. We'll see you there.